So right now, as you can imagine, I'm spending a lot of time indoors. So the amount of space I have to utilize here at home is somewhat valuable. Interestingly though, a survey done by Closet Maid in 2016 showed that the average American woman has 103 items of clothing in her closet. Now, I personally don't own that much, but when living in a small space, finding the room to store all of these can be a daunting prospect. Typically when you purchase or rent a home, you're paying by the square foot, so clearly space matters. You want this space so you can enjoy it, move around and relax. But a lot of people, when entering a new home for the first time, immediately proceed to fill any empty space with stuff. And when there isn't enough space for other stuff, they buy storage furniture for that stuff. The funny thing about storage furniture is that, in a sense, it makes the space you're paying for unusable. You would never buy a house that had areas sectioned off or occupied for no reason. But besides creating a home for your 103 items of clothing, the majority of storage furniture does exactly that. However, by having furniture that integrates storage into other functions, you can save space in your home or claim back areas that were once lost, which is pretty handy when living in an apartment or tiny home. So thinking of essential furniture as storage furniture is not something that comes naturally to most people. Many people's tendency is to buy homes that are larger and find nice looking pieces to fill the empty spaces. This seems like somewhat of a backwards logic to me, and as an architect, I strangely find joy out of creating efficient spaces and solving the problems of spatial limitations. So when I first found out that I was getting the keys to our tiny 300 square foot apartment, this was a challenge I was ready and raring to tackle. Our bedroom is a total of 59 square feet with 10 square feet of built-in closet space. Aside from another closet occupied by our hot water tank, this is the only closet in the house. So it's also home to some of our larger and random items, such as our guitar, ironing board, books, documents, camera gear, hamper, and right now, a stockpile of Korean ramen noodles. Needless to say, this doesn't leave much room for clothes, and considering that my wife Nisha isn't a minimalist, it's mostly hers. As soon as the footprint of a bed goes into the room, there's no space for anything else. So any storage for clothing would have to end up in the main space or in a tiny wardrobe placed awkwardly at the end of the bed, neither of which I was going to settle for. My wife Nisha is originally from Vancouver, so when we decided to get married, all of her belongings ended up coming here, which meant suitcases, a lot of suitcases, all of which needed a place to go, and all of which contained a lot of stuff. So I knew all I had to work with is 59 square feet, and I knew that as soon as a bed goes into that small space, there's no more room left, as you really need two sides to get in and out of a bed if there's two of you in there. So this left only one more area for Nisha's assortment of suitcases, under the bed. When you search online for storage beds, they typically come in two forms, an ottoman bed which flips up and is essentially useless if you need to access things while your partner is sleeping, and storage beds with lots of drawers. These make a lot more sense as you can easily access what you need. However, they typically don't have many drawers and the drawers are usually on the left and right hand sides of the bed. In our case, rendering one half of the bed useless. These bed options were also a lot more expensive than your typical basic bed frame. So I knew that I was going to be forced to go the custom route to get all the storage I needed for a decent price. The problem is, custom furniture is expensive and time consuming. So my first thought was how can I make this as easy and cheap as possible with what I have available to me. I thought the typical furniture for storing clothes other than a wardrobe is a dresser, which is really what I wished I had the space for. But then I thought, what if you put your dresser under the mattress? And a simple idea was born. Because we were on a budget, I started scouring the internet for the most reasonably priced dresses. I inevitably came across IKEA's renowned Marm range and saw that they do an enormous six drawer version that measures 1600 millimeters wide. I cross checked that against mattress sizes and was pleasantly surprised that this matches the exact width of a Euro king sized bed. Place another dresser perpendicularly to the other and it leaves just enough space for a headboard and a massive cavity for suitcases behind. This gave us a monumental 12 dressers of storage in a footprint that would have been eaten up by sleeping space regardless of what we did. 
I then had to figure out how to build a frame to fill the rest of the cavity behind. I knew that builders often build stud work walls using 2x4 timber, so I figured if this is such a commonly used size and strong enough for walls, it will probably be good enough for a bed frame. In case you didn't know, timber is commonly referred to in inches, but 2x4s are not actually 2x4 inches. This is because when the board is first rough sawn from the log, it is a true 2x4 but the drying process and planing of the board reduce it to a finished size of 1.5 by 3.5. To make matters even more confusing, in the UK we work with the metric system, which means I had to design my bed frame with the actual 2x4 sizes, which are 38 by 89 millimeters. Just thought I'd add that in there in case you were wondering. So knowing these dimensions, I then used SketchUp to figure out the exact lengths of wood I'd need to build a frame. You can either download this software like I have, or use it online for free. As a tool, it's invaluable for quickly figuring out what you can fit into a space in 3D. So I created all of the lengths I'd need in the model when measured up against the space behind the dressers, and created a cutting list, which I've put down in the video description below. Then all I needed to do was head over to my nearest builder's merchants or DIY store to get the wood cut to the appropriate lengths, and then pick up the appropriately sized screws and I was good to go. Putting all this together was relatively simple, and although I toyed with the idea, I'm not going to take it all apart and put it back together for the video, although that is something I would quite like to do. It really was just a matter of following the IKEA instructions to build the dressers, screwing the four-legged frame together, and throwing on the slats. Now, although all this may seem great, I know some of you may be thinking, I'm only five foot two, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get up there. Well, I see your point, but Nish really is five foot two. And although I have no problem sliding into bed and she could technically jump up, we decided to get a little step stool that we picked up from Ikea to help her get up to her side of the bed more easily. The reason I think this bed is so amazing is because literally anyone can make it and it doesn't require any fancy tools or equipment like saws, clamps and glue. Nish and I have found it to be an absolute game changer for our apartment and still haven't fully filled all of the drawers up, even with her maximalist wardrobe. <laughs> 